topic, we're looking at the subject of robust stability. So there are a number of things we're going to look at in this process. Not all will be in this lecture. We're going to talk about basic uncertainty forms, about casting uncertainty into a normalized form. We'll look and see how the Nyquist criteria and small gain theorem relate to robust stability. And then, again, recasting a specific problem into the standard form. So, in the robust stability problem, we assume that the actual plant belongs to a particular set of plants. For example, a set with additive uncertainty or a set with multiplicative uncertainty. Then we'll seek to prove stability for the entire class of systems. And this will imply stability for the particular system. So the reason we look at it in terms of an entire class or enti entire set is because the fact that the fact of uncertainty means we don't know exactly what our system uncertainty is, and so we, we need to actually solve the stability problem for an entire class or set of plants. Um, and therefore, one, the one that we have, which is included in that set, will be guaranteed. So that's the basic idea. So in this particular loop, we consider the, what's called the loop transfer function which is basically everything until you, as you go around the loop, not including the loop as a loop. And so the nominal open loop transfer function is, so L naught is given by P naught times K. So, so in terms of uncertainty for the additive uncertainty problem, so in the additive uncertainty, we have our nominal plant and then our uncertainty that appears and the two are in parallel with each other. And, um, Notice that the uncertainty, if delta is equal to zero, this uncertainty is basically zero, and we end up with just the nominal plant. Otherwise, we have this form. And notice that in this process, we're not going to say anything specifically about whether, for example, we know that if you have things in parallel that you can lose controllability and so forth. We're not even going to go there in this. It turns out we don't actually need to go there. And it's because of the fact we have uncertainty, there's no real, real point in going there because there's no guarantee that we would have that. So we actually look at this from a different perspective. So we have this loop gain. So it includes K and includes this stuff. So in general, it's this. The nominal is that. And again, we're going to assume the K, the controller, whatever controller we use, stabilizes the nominal system. So consider now the open loop transfer function, the nominal open loop transfer function, and we look at this quantity, 1 plus L naught of J omega. Okay, And so because of the fact that we've chosen a stabilizing controller, this quantity does not encircle the minus 1 point. That comes from the Nyquist criterion. So we know that the, not, the controller um, stabilizes the nominal system. So the question is, does it stabilize the actual system, the system with the uncertainty? Okay, so that's the question. And so in this ro robust stability problem, we assume that W has been chosen such that the uncertainty has an infinity norm less than or equal to one. And we want to know if the feedback system remains stable for all uncertainties in this set. So if we assume a stable nominal open loop, then the Nyquist plot of L1 plus L0 does not encircle the minus 1 point. Also, the roots of the denominator are 1 plus L is equal to 0. L is 1 plus P, K. And so here we're looking at S equal J omega on the, on the boundary, which is what we use when we work with the Nyquist criterion. And so 1 plus P, K becomes all of this stuff. So we have 1 plus L0 plus all of this stuff. Okay, so... This quantity basically scales the uncertainty, WK, and then we know that the uncertainty has infinity norm less than or equal to 1. So, so notice that in this process, we're, we're assuming that delta may be a transfer function. So unlike the, um, unlike the, the problem of structured uncertainty, where in, in that case, our delta was something that was unknown, but it was just a constant, constant matrix. In this case, our delta can actually be a transfer function. 
So if we write the equation, that is, if we set 1 plus L equal to 0, we, we rewrite this equation, we can get this con condition. And so if we look at the magnitude of both sides of this equation, we get this. That is, we can separate the uncertainty. And, and so we have this. And we know that this must be less than or equal to 1. And so if the uncertainty, uh, the scale on the uncertainty. So this is, the, this is the uncertainty. This is what scales the uncertainty. And so if, in fact, we have this strict inequality, 1 plus L naught is strictly greater than this quantity, then the Nyquist plot is not encircled. Okay. Alternately, you can rewrite this inequality this way. So there's a couple of ways of looking at it. So what, is this, what does this quantity even mean? Well, the loop gain is, is um, that's the plant times the controller. And uh, since we know the nominal plant and the controller, we can actually plot the Nyquist plot of that. And the, so this would be an example of the Nyquist plot of a, of a function like that. And so 1 plus L0, so this is the plot of L0, 1 plus L0 is actually the distance from minus 1 to L, L0. And this inequality is basically saying this is a function that's a function of frequency, and we're looking to see if this quantity then has magnitude less than this, but that magnitude is actually this magnitude. This is actually the magnitude of 1 plus L0. Okay, and so um, we're looking to see the magnitude of omega times k at that point. So if this circle does not touch the minus one point, then we're good. Right, so we have that. So the nominal feedback system is stable with the poles of the zeros, or the zeros of this. These zeros are in the left half plane, and the system can only go unstable if and only if the zeros cross into the into the right half plane in particular they must hit the imaginary axis so there's an, a, an omega such that 1 plus l omega must be positive in magnitude for all frequencies and all uncertainties okay so if these zeros do not cross over then this this quantity must be positive for all frequencies and all uncertainties. Okay, so that we we require that. That is actually true of this uh, in terms of frequencies, but not necessarily in terms of uncertainties. So um, once again, we have this is our our quantity that we're working with, and so we have must have this greater than zero for all omega and all uncertainties. This inequality is actually equivalent to this inequality. That is, we've just divided through by the magnitude of this quantity here, um, p and, and there's k here. If divide through, since this is positive, we and since the uh, since l naught one plus l naught must be positive for all frequencies. Okay, since 1 plus L0 is not a function of, uh, of the uncertainty, then it's also true for all uncertainty. So we can divide through by that quantity. We get this. And so 1 plus this quantity times delta must be greater than 0. And again, that must be true for all frequencies and all uncertainties. Okay, So this condition which must hold for all frequencies and all uncertainties is also equivalent to this condition. Now, how do we go from here to here? Notice that this condition does not involve delta. Okay, this does not involve delta. So if we happen to choose a delta with magnitude equal to one, then a specific, then we can actually get this inequality directly. And so here is an example so the question is, how do we get this? And I'm not going to tell you the answer, but I can tell you that if we choose delta to be of this form, okay, so magnitude 1 with the phase 
being the phase of this quantity here, um, then we can actually get, uh, actually it should be minus the phase, uh, then we get that this inequality is satisfied. So for all omega, okay, for all omega. So we have that condition. So for additive uncertainty, if we have this set of uncertainties, then the closed loop system will be stable for that set of uncertainties if and only if the nominal plant satisfies this inequality, which is which is which basically comes from this. Okay. If this is true for all omega, then it certainly holds for the supremum. The supremum then is The infinity norm. So the infinity norm must be strictly less than one. So we have that result for the additive uncertainty. So that's when you have again the uncertainty and the plant going in a parallel path. If we look at multiplicative uncertainty, multiplicative uncertainty is when you have the uncertainty and then the plant. So they're in cascade with one another or in series. So in which case our function that we're looking at the infinity norm of is different than the additive. And so this has WK over 1 plus P naught. This is WP naught K over 1 plus P naught. So a little bit different function. And it's, and it's basically because we have a different place in which our uncertainty enters. So this gives us the small gain principle for the two, two different types of uncertainty. Additive uncertainty and multiplicative uncertainty. Next, we're going to look at the small gain theorem in general.